AMI, I can't hear you. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a winner tonight in this place. I am a winner. There is a winner tonight in this place. I am. Make a, a Holy winner. Ghost crazy noise. Hallelujah. Day number five. Day number five. Yeah. Hallelujah! Glory to Jesus! Yeah. Hallelujah! We're celebrating Jesus Christ. Number five is God's number of grace. We receive it. There will be a new grace upon somebody's I life tonight. There will be a new grace upon somebody's life tonight i receive Woo! Hey. hallelujah we serve a mighty god oh, yes. how many of you are fasting still fasting Jesus. today we begin officially the ivp Tomorrow, early morning, it's a full day. Amen. We have all come from all over because we trust in this God. Amen. And please let me tell you, there are things that money cannot buy. Right. Material things cannot produce. Things that only God can give. Amen. Those of you out there, my sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen who are watching from around the world, I wave to you. May my God be your God. May his goodness manifest in your life tonight in the name of Jesus. Every time I read the word of the Lord that says that from the time of John the Baptist till today, the kingdom of God suffers violence, Amen. meaning it is conditioned by violence. And the violent take it by force. Amen. I wonder which type of violence the Bible talk about. Mm -hmm. Do we need to be violent to one another? No. It is a certain attitude that uh, if you are in the kingdom of God, you ought to have. Through that attitude, whatever the Lord has set for you comes to you. What is that attitude? It is not an attitude of passivity and laziness. You must be able to embrace God and uh, pull from heaven what is yours. Somebody lifts your hand and say, today I declare. Today I declare. Everything that God has for me. Everything that God has for me. Shall come unto me. Shall come unto me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So do your best to look beyond man. Right. Do your best to look beyond anybody. Pastor Alf has never saved a man. That's right. Pastor Alf did not die on the cross of Calvary for a man. That's right. Pastor Alf is merely a chosen instrument. And I do not have amnesia to think otherwise. Are you hearing me? But in the calling that uh, he had called me for, all I do is humble myself in his presence so I may be everything he called me to be. Amen. There is only one mediator between you and God, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is the one you came for jesus is the one who will answer you amen he's your mediator i'm your facilitator hallelujah i'm here to make sure that that miracle goes home with you i receive it in the name of, of jesus. jesus 
Glory to Jesus. I want you to find your neighbor and greet the person next to you. Welcome somebody in the house of God. Welcome those who are here. Welcome your brothers, your sisters. Lord Abba Santa. We bless you, Jesus. Amen. Lift your hand now, thank him, and give him glory. Hallelujah. As we are fasting and praying, we are praying to a God who answers prayer. Yes, Lord. We have come before you, Jehovah. Mm. We have come before you, Lord of Lords. Yes, Jesus. We have come before you, Most High God, mm. in the name of Jesus, your Son, mm. to want to us tonight according to your will. We want to lift our hands in praise and worship to you, O oh God. We want to say, O oh Lord, reign in our midst tonight. Yes, Jesus. Be God in this assembly tonight. In the name of do Jesus. what no man can do, O oh God. Mm. Our eyes are on you. Yes, you the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. You the beginning, you the end. You the Alpha, you the Omega. Mm. We pray, oh God, have your way. Reach every man Jesus. and every woman tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Spirit of the living God, we pray, glorify Jesus Christ in our midst. Mm. Spirit of the living God, glorify Jesus yes, Lord. in our midst. Do it, oh God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody say amen and amen. Amen. Give him praise. He's God. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Glory to Jesus. Is there anything you want to see tonight in your life? I try to decide. Is there anything you want to see tonight in your life? Yes. Can I speak to somebody out there? Is there anything you want to see in your life tonight? Oh God. The people that know that God that shall be strong, they shall do exploits. I know this God. Mm. He spoke to me last night. Concerning your case tonight. I will say that. The reason why I speak with boldness is because I know what I'm talking about. Mm. If I was you, I would wave bye bye to my pains. Bye bye to pains. Bye bye to my pains. Bye bye. Bye bye, 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 bye. to the works of the enemy. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye, bye. bye, bye to suffering. Bye bye. bye, bye. Jesus, thank you. This time is the most spiritual time you can ever have as the Lord had commissioned us to deal with uh, spiritual matters. Last night I had said, if it is not spiritual, it's not worth it. It doesn't matter. It's not worth it. Right. We have not come here to show our shoes. We have not come here to give each other a high five. You may not like me. I have not come for you. I have come oh, to touch yes. heaven. Hallelujah. A church is more than just a place of uh, friendship. It's more than that. Right. It's good if there is friendship, but we have come for more than friendship. Hallelujah. The church is not a place where we need to tell you about your hair. Right. I will never spend 45 good minutes of God telling you about which color to wear. I tell you. Tell you about Christmas. Christmas is the 25th or December or January. No one gets saved because of Christmas. That's right. We are here to travel. Hallelujah. We are here to bring heaven down. Hallelujah. We are here so that divinity and humanity may meet. Amen. We are here to show forth the glory of the living God. Hallelujah. May I prophesy over you. Oh, I will say. Every work of the enemy in your life is destroyed in the name of I will save. 
Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. You are an overcomer. I receive it. If you're an overcomer, can I see your hand? Glory to Jesus. I am you an see, overcomer. You see, this is faith. You are here. You have issues. You are here. You have battles. But I'm talking about an overcomer. And I say, wave to me. You prophetically waved. By doing so, you say, I know that the reality says one thing. But I hear I stand in the truth of God that says I am an overcomer. So I am waving because I am agreeing with God. Hallelujah. I am agreeing with God. Hallelujah. I am an overcomer. Devil, see my hand waving to God. Hallelujah. I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. When the church of God will understand that what is born of flesh is flesh mm. and what is born of spirit is spirit we as a body as a family will arise in such grace and power that literally men and women walking on earth will think that we come from a different planet Right. Because what pulls people down will not pull us down anymore. In the name of Jesus. What hurts them will not hurt us anymore. I receive it. We become invincible, meaning undefeatable, meaning we always win, meaning we that when all is win. done, we will always be victorious. Amen. I prophesy victory in your life. I receive. I prophesy victory in your life. I receive. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Do this. This is number five. Number five is number of grace. Mm -hmm. Grace gives you access to unmerited favor. Amen. As you stand here today with number five showing, I prophesy over your life that my God will give you access to unmerited favor from this it. day forward you and Jesus. your loved ones will be beneficiaries of what you were not worthy for tomorrow I yesterday God is about to give you access to unmerited favor wherever you may be watching this is your portion I receive it see it in your life in the name of oh, Jesus May God fulfill his word it. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now the same as you show, give it to your neighbor. A good high five. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. You may be seated in the presence of God. We do this very quickly. Hallelujah. I'm glad to see all of you and God bless you. God bless you too. I am humbled that we are all in obedience to the call of God came and standing here in faith. It is my prayer that uh, none of us may leave without seeing the glory of God expected in his heart. Amen. God will do something for you, for me, that will blow the mind of many out there. I will say. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I had not seen my son, Prophet J. Israel, for a while. Glory. Oh, yeah. Glory to Jesus. Literally, I had given him a prophetic word the last time he was here, there, and I prayed for him. And I told him that God wanted to do a great assignment with him. And I had mentioned specifically three places. I said in Polokwane, I said in Zimbabwe, but especially in Durban. And I tell you, Durban is invaded right now. Glory yeah. to Jesus. Hallelujah. As I speak to you, there is an invasion. There is uh, um, a great ministry uh, that is going on. He had uh, two impartation services. It was full you know, he has offices there already. He has a big house there. The ministry is growing. Hallelujah. I just, in few, Hallelujah. few weeks, the impact is mind-blowing. You know, as we go, um, you know, in a week or so, he will come and stand and give you a testimony. But I'm proud of you, son. 
I'm proud of your obedience to the prophetic word Glory of God. to Jesus. And what God began to do, carry on. He's uh, based in Amen. Durban now in uh, Mutlanga. Is that her? Yeah. Am I pronouncing it right? All right. So if you are uh, in Durban, in KwaZulu Natal, you know where to go. Hallelujah. Amen. God Amen. bless you. Amen. Lift your hands. Say, Lord, speak to me. Lord, Lord speak, speak to me. me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't want to take much of your time. I feel the pressure of the Spirit in laying the foundation this week with the Word of God. It is my conviction that as we will be standing on the right foundation of the Word of God concerning this vital issue, vital tool revealed by the Spirit of God, that uh, from this point forward, years to come and generations, we will remain strong. Our children will be strong. Our see. grandchildren will be strong because our foundation will be right. Amen. So the pressure I have is to present to you the word of God and making sure that uh, you grasp and understand every bit of what God is speaking. The word I am bringing to you, my beloved, is not one that I have uh, cooked in my mind. It is uh, through the leading of the Holy Ghost that uh, I have come to speak to you about altars. If you understand altars, you will understand power. Amen. Because it is only as you stand on certain altars that you have the privilege of operating in a certain level of power. Any man's altar is, is a power base. So I took time to speak to you on what is an altar. And speaking about what is an altar, I went on speaking, uh, clarifying that altars are not raised only on God's side, even on the devil's side. Gideon was called by God, but before beginning his mission, his assignment number one was that he may destroy the altars of Baal that uh, belong to his father. Because they are altars that speak against your life. There are many around the globe who are fighting battles that do not know where it comes from. They fight invisible forces. They do not know why they're going through what they're going through. And it is only as the revelation of the word comes to them that the eyes open to understand that all this war, the reason why marriage did not work, the reason why I had no child, the reason why my business did not go anywhere, the reason why in my father's house there is no one who have achieved anything is simply because of evil altars. And understanding that an altar is not just a physical thing. It is a thing done in the physical realm for a spiritual purpose. Every altar fulfills a spiritual purpose. And an altar does not die by itself. Okay. An altar remains alive and survives generations. A good altar will speak to a thousand generations. An evil altar will go and reach others in generation way after it has been established. Once you decide to stop the influence or the impact of an altar in your life, in your family, or in your nation, you have to destroy that altar. An altar that is not destroyed will keep operating. Be it that you know about it or you do not. You ignore it or you do not. It will operate either for your good or for your bad. Right. That's why the Lord spoke to Gideon and said, before you carry on your assignment, destroy evil altars that belong to your father. Your father had erected altars to Baal. Those altars are working against you. Now, I moved from speaking to you about destroying evil altars and I began to speak to you about building up or understanding the power of your altars. 
The power of your altars, ladies and gentlemen, you must understand that what makes an altar so powerful is not the type of structure of it. The strength of an altar is not in the size of its structure. The strength of an altar is in the size of its sacrifice. That's why those who understand the spiritual realm, understanding that in the spiritual realm, the battle is in words and in altars, they take serious sacrifice to the altars. Because when your altars receive sacrifice from God or from you for God, that altar has power for you. And to the side of the enemy, when an altar is fed with sacrifice, that altar gives power to whoever owns it. It is important to understand this little simple principle because your breakthrough depends on it. You will never be a child of God that falls short of the glory of God if you understand altars. The reason why from the olden days we have seen everyone great in God went on building altars after altars. Abraham built so many altars in his life. Noah built altars. Jacob built altars. Isaac, his father, built altars. David built altars. We have seen uh, great men, uh, Gideon and so forth, building altars. It's because they understand you win in the spiritual realm because of your altar. That's right. Your altar is key for your breakthrough. The word of God is true. Everything you have seen in the word is true. God did not lie. The promises of God are not to excite your emotions. When he say you'll be the head, he did not lie. When he say that whatever you touch will prosper, he did not lie. When he say that a thousand may fall on your side, ten thousand and nine will come to you, he did not lie. The reason why we children of God, carrying a black leather Bible or any of the Bible you have, are not seeing the fulfillment of what God said in his word. It's not because God lied. It's simply because we are not spiritually aligned to everything that God has given That's us right. in his word. If you and I, by revelation, will decode the scriptures and understand what we gotta do in the scripture, we will stand right and we will begin to see that everything that he said is manifesting in our lives. You shall be the head and never the tail. You'll be blessed going it. out and coming in. Blessed it. in the city. Blessed in I the field. It. God said it. If you believe it and tap into it, it shall manifest. Amen. That's why boldly I can say. And the devil hears this and knows it is true that at this week finishing those of you will align with the word of God will never be the same again I receive this little wizard that I've been uh, uh, coming around your house pulling you down bringing all kind of confusion is about to meet the true fire of God I receive in the name of Jesus are you hearing me? Amen. I've seen believers pray. I've seen believers give. I've seen believers scream. I've seen believers jump. I've seen believers believing the word. But yet when you look at their lives, they fall short of the glory. Mm. Why? Is it because God is not God enough to do what he say he will do? My people, he say, mm. perish because of lack of of knowledge ladies and gentlemen more than any weapon out there lack of knowledge known as ignorance can destroy you quicker than an atomic bomb right. ignorance does not spare you what you do not know will kill you 
Right. What you do not know will not justify you. Oh, well, please, I'm justified because I did not know that I supposed not to do this. Ignorance is not for justification. It's a weapon in the hand of the enemy to tear you down. But when God brings revelation, he enlarges your path. He reveals what is hidden to align you. And in obedience, as you do what he say you should do, you begin to arise higher than your enemies. I, I am prophesying over you. I the end of your battles in the name of Jesus. I, I am prophesying over you that you may mount up with wings like an eagle in the I name of Jesus. It. That from this day forward, you may go from glory to glory, in from victory to victory, Jesus. from victory to success in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Please have a seat. The power behind your altar lies in your sacrifice. Last night we had a good time of the anointing. Where the anointing of God as we have seen Jacob do. We had experienced it. I believe that the portion of the glory of God had been released in his sons and daughters. As the anointing of God came on us. You must know that in the prophetic, there are things that you may undermine. Mm -hmm. It may not make sense, mm -hmm. but uh, the prophetic works beyond rationalities of men. Amen. Elisha said to a great general who came to him seeking help because he was sick in his body. He had an incurable disease. He was uh, a leper. Leprosity was incurable. Elisha some say Elisha sent him to the Jordan River and say, all you got to do is dip yourself seven times. Ladies and gentlemen, it made no sense. What is the link between dipping yourself in the Jordan River seven times? Why not six times? Why not five times? Why not eight times? Why seven times? It did not make sense. But he said to him, if you dip yourself seven times, I don't need to see you. Something will happen to you. Mm. This man began to mumble because he did not meet the rationality of his mind. He felt that the prophet was mocking him. His expectations were not met. He said, I thought that the man of God will come to me. He will wave his hand where the pain is, where the disease is. But now he's asking me to go to the Jordan River and dip myself seven times. He said, where I come from, we have better rivers than the Jordan River. He did not understand in the prophetic, it's not about the river. Mm -hmm. It's about the prophetic word. That's right. So his servant came to him and said, oh master, if the prophet had asked you to do something difficult, you would have done it. Now this is a simple thing. So hearing his servant, he agreed to go and dip himself seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six. At the seventh time, something happened. A miracle took place. Amen. He was completely cured from, of that disease. You see, the prophetic does not always come according to what you expect. That's right. But as you align with what God is saying, despite the fact that it does not meet your expectation or not, let me tell you, a miracle will happen. I receive it. Today, somebody's miracle will manifest in the name of Jesus. I receive. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. We use the anointing well. And I believe that God began to manifest. And I had promised you that tonight, on the fifth day of our fast, on this faithful Friday, I'll speak to us on how to raise an altar. I will try to be as systematic as possible. But while taking you on the journey, I want to carefully make sure that there is a painted picture of what I'm saying in your mind. I want to tap into your ability to imagine things because imagination that you carry in you is one of the parts that you have received directly from God. Your divinity rests there. Your ability to create and to make comes from your imagination. 
So I am taking step by step, painting a picture so that each one of you may have a picture of what I am trying to communicate. As I said earlier on, I believe that this word will help you not only for Monday. It will help you for next year, 10 years to go, 100 years, your generation after you will be beneficiaries of what is happening today. Therefore, I am taking time. I am repeating myself. I have learned that the repetition is the mother of all science. Sometimes for you to step into it, you got to hear it again and again and again. I love you. Yes, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. As you hear it again and again, you I feel with the love. You know beyond any single doubt that the love from him is true, is firm. That's why I say it again and again. Ladies and gentlemen, altars will make you. Amen. There is no great man without a great altar. No one makes it where he's supposed to get. Without having a strong, solid altar. There is a level in life where you will not have a seat, a role to play unless you have something backing you up. Many will go out of the ways to please the devil. They bow to Satan. They subject themselves to all kinds of grigries. So that they may have a backup in a certain level of life. You too, if you will be an ordinary person with a good heart that dresses well, that doesn't drink, that the things that are because he sings hymns with a good soprano uh, tone, God will give you power and you'll be able to play in that realm. You are missing the point. You must have something that backs you up. For you to be a true pastor, somebody that lives your potential according to what God said, you got to have a backup. You got to have something that stands with you as a businessman. When you meet all those who are competing in the marketplace with you, you got to have something that backs you up. Amen. When the enemy comes with all the schemes and try to play cheeky cheeky with you, what will help you not fall in the trap is that mm. you have something that is backing you up. Abraham understood that. Those who lived in his time understood that. What backs you up is that what I am presenting you today is your altar. Mm. Whoever controls the altar in the land controls the land itself. That's right. You will never have control over anything unless your altar can cover that sphere. Amen. If my altar in Satan is greater, which it is, than any other altar I am controlling here. Oh, yes. Glory, glory to Jesus. If your altar in your workplace is higher than any other altar, you call the shot. If the church will raise a stronger altar than the altar of those who goes and call on the dead, we as a church of God in our nation will call the shot. Hallelujah. We will speak to the devil of crime and say, leave. We will speak to the devil of poverty and say, leave. And that that will manifest. Whoever controls the altar in the land controls the land itself. Your family may be dynamic. Your father or grandfather had 17 wives, 1,200 children or grandchildren. It does not matter. If your altar is greater in the family, you will call the shot. That's why your altar matters. I said, that is why your altar, altar matters. matters. No one can defeat you if his altar is not greater than yours. Amen. It doesn't matter if he hates you, if he's angry. It doesn't matter if he's muscled. 
It doesn't matter if he has the applaud of others. No one can defeat you. Unless his altar is greater than your altar. If somebody will defeat you, his altar must be more powerful, must be greater than your altar. The flying devil, the creeping devil, the walking devil, the swimming devil, the running devil will never find you because you are hidden in God and your altar in God is greater. Amen. It will never be heard that Aflukau has been attacked by any witch from some countries, any devil worshiper and affiliate. It will never happen. In the name of my Jesus. secret is not my suit. My secret is my Hallelujah. altar. I have an altar on the platform of my God. Jesus. The Christian died, yes. Everywhere. Every day. They have Jesus, yes. The Christian creep in poverty, yes. Open your eyes. Everywhere. Does calamity befall believers? Yes. Where? Everywhere. Where is God in that? He's there. So if God is there, why is it that this is happening? It's because most of us do not even have a clue of what Jesus has done for us. And uh, what the spiritual realm entails. And uh, we try to fight battles in the natural realm. Not understanding that unless you win your victory up there, you will never enjoy it down here. Right. Are you hearing me? There will be a change in your life from this day forward. I receive it. I say there will be a change in your life from this day forward. I receive it. From this day forward, you will mount up wings like an eagle in the name of Jesus. I receive I decree and I declare from this day whatever was difficult in your life becomes easy in the I name of Jesus. Receive it. What used to be closed opens up in the name of Jesus. Jesus. What they had called impossible, you will see it turn to possible I in the name of Jesus. So shall it be, it cannot be otherwise in Jesus the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. Be seated. My altar, my life, my altar, mm -hmm. my strength, oh God, my altar, my breakthrough, my altar, my power. Mm -hmm. When, when, when you, 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 you touch this altar and you truthfully connect to this altar, certain spirit. Stay away from you. Amen. Because they understand what you have connected with. Anna was barren. She prayed. She did all she could. Nothing happened. She had the support of the wife, the love of the, the, the support of the husband, the love of the husband, but that did not help until she came and connected to the altar. You can never be the same until if you understand the great power behind an altar. Amen. I had spoken about 10 things that you should know that makes your altar. And this I am summarizing so you may be ready to know what you need to do as I prepare you to raise your own altar. I say an altar is not limited to the structure that were raised yesterday upon which they offered sacrifices to God. The true reality of what an altar is. Number one, an altar is a gateway to the supernatural, to the spiritual realm. Mm. Every time you see an altar, heaven is open. The spiritual realm has a connection with that place. An altar is a corridor to the invisible world either with God 
or with the devil. Two, an altar is a place of communion, a place of fellowship, a place of supernatural invocation. People will build altars because they wanted to commune with uh, spiritual things, spiritual beings, deities. They did not just raise altars. Altars were part of communication and fellowship. Three, an altar is a place of sacrifice, a place of worship. Men and women will come with all kinds of things and present it to the altar. The Hebrew word translated in English by altar is the word misbay. Misbay means the place of slaughter. When they spoke about an altar, they spoke about misbay. And Mizbei was a place where you slaughter. So men, as they got ready to offer sacrifices to God, they would not slaughter only in the kitchen. What you slaughter in the kitchen is for your table. But they will bring the offering to God and slaughter it right there on the altar. That the blood of the animal may be shed on that platform. It was a place of sacrifice. You cannot have an altar if you are not ready to make sacrifice on it. Right. Every altar claims a sacrifice. For an altar is a place of covenant. Whenever you see an altar, you must know there has been a covenant behind this. Mm. This is a place of covenant. There are sons and daughters of God. Whose spiritual umbilical cord are linked to mine on this altar. Right. They are in covenant with God. They are in covenant with the men of God. And they are in covenant with the house of God. Right. Alto is a place of covenant. If you want to raise an altar, you must get ready to enter into covenant with God. God loves covenant. The Bible calls him a covenant keeping God. The only reason why we relate to him as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is because he keeps his covenant from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's not our God, he's a God of the dead. No. He's a God who keeps covenant. Hallelujah. And Alto is also a place of remembrance. Men will erect altars to remember what has been done from the spiritual realm to the natural realm. As God's hand will lead them and manifest in their lives. Because they do not want to forget what had been happening or what had happened. They will erect an altar. An altar is a place of exchange. Every altar is a place of exchange. Men will come to the altar and carry the sacrifice to the altar. And as they are there, they seek an exchange. Mm -hmm. I take an offering. I am in church with my money in my pocket. And I hear something coming from this altar that I desire, that I want to see in my life. I run to the altar. I don't run to the asha. I don't run to the offering basket because it is not a money thing. I need to be on Hallelujah. this altar. If there is a Lord queue, I will Jesus. be in the queue. But mm. I got to drop it on the altar. Why? Because this altar is a place of exchange. As I release that, I get another. Mm. If a man will drag mm. a fearful goat to a shrine, <laughs> Though the Lord God doesn't want to be dragged there, and evil men will drag him to the altar, to the shrine, and present him to the shrine, and speak to the shrine, speak to the altar, and say, My name is so so so. I have come to you and I brought you a gift, this little gold, because I want Mr. So and so, who is well loved at work. To fall, so I may take his place. So I bring you the, the, the goat. Now the goat on the altar is uh, there for an exchange. You miss a so-and-so, you are loved by everybody. 
All you do is speak English at work. Not knowing that at night somebody is making an exchange over your life. Right. Suddenly, tomorrow, Monday, as you go to work, everything is falling apart. You're wondering why. Not knowing that there is an evil who has touched the spiritual realm with a goat that he brought for an exchange. An altar is a place of an exchange. Lord, I touch this altar for my children. I touch this altar that you may touch my children. Change their lives and that this, oh God, I lay before you. It's a place of an exchange. Are you hearing me, somebody? An altar is also your power base. Those who understand and have raised altars in their lives do not just die. Where is Mr. Ku? No, he died. When? Before yesterday. How? Just like that. It will never be your portion in the name of Jesus. I receive. And timing death will never be your portion in the name of I Jesus. I receive it. You will not die before your time in the, in name, of the name of Jesus. Lift your hand and say, I will not die. I will not die. Say, I will live. I will live. I will declare. I will declare. The goodness of the Lord. The goodness of the in Lord. In the land of the living. In the land of the living. Please have a seat now. It's your power base. What happens to everybody and uh, takes them down? When you have an altar, is your power base. You see two people walking. They are in the same, under the same umbrella. Either they are all children of God, they go to the same church. But the commitment is different because one has an altar, the other does not have. When you look at them, you see one strong, the other weak. It's not because God loves the strong more than he loves the weak. No, it's simply because of what they did. Two native doctors. What makes one stronger than the other is not the fact that the one, is, uh, the one who's stronger is the most scarier than the other. No. It is that his altar is greater than the other altar. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, what makes the difference is your altar. Amen. That's why Noah understood that he had to raise an altar. Upon raising the altar, the Lord smelled what came from the altar. And the Bible said, God spoke to himself and said, never again. Shall I destroy mankind? Mm -hmm. Knowing that uh, from their youth, men's imaginations are all to evil. But I will never again destroy mankind. Simply because a man understood the power of an altar. An altar is a place of refuge. A place of refuge. The Bible says when somebody will have difficulty because of a wrongdoing and fear for his life and he runs to hold the homes of the altar no mob should touch him simply because he ran to the altar it will bring protection the enemy will look for you will never find you Amen. because you understand the power of the altar when a man is saying an altar is a place of meeting mm -hmm. that's why you do not just walk in somebody's altar you must understand that there are things behind that. Yes. It's a place of meetings. When you go to your altar, you are going there to meet with deity, for us to meet mm. with God. Mm. This does not imply that God is not everywhere, but it simply means that this place has been dedicated for him. So for sure you know beyond any single doubt that when you go there, you are going there with the purpose of meeting with him and you will show up. Last, an encounter is a place of divine encounters. Not only you meet him, you will have an experience with him. You will have an experience with your God. Are you hearing me? Amen. But as present to you this simple question and I will lead you in answering it. How do you raise an altar? Many things are spoken out there on how to raise your altar. And I present to you what the Lord has led us to. In the bracket, please understand 
I understand very clearly what I do because many a times by the Spirit of God I've been led to erect altars. Literally for everything in my life, anything meaningful, there has been an engagement to the altar. I understand it. That's why I believe that the word of God will always come to pass in my life. Amen. I leave everything that is said. I fight battles that are not natural to normal people. The kind of battles that I have will terrify one that is known as strong and destroy him in a couple of uh, minutes. But the reason why I stand and survive is because I understand the secret in the spiritual realm. Amen. You do not know a warrior because by the, his outlook, you know a warrior by the type of wars he fought. That's right. So true. Are you hearing me? Amen. Genesis 28 verse 18, we go back to Jacob. The Bible reads, Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head and set it up as a pillow and poured oil on top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city had been loose previously. Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I am going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And his stone and this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be the house of God. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. This is Jacob. The Bible says as he was running from his brother, he laid under a tree and he used a stone as a pillow. That night he had an encounter with God. In the morning when he woke up, he used that same stone to erect or to build or to raise an altar. There are five important steps in raising an altar. The first thing, if you want to raise an altar, the altar for you and I in the New Testament is not a physical thing, it's a spiritual thing. But it is imperative and it is encouraging that your altar may have a physical manifestation. That's why, number one, when you want to erect your altar, build your altar or raise your altar, you must, one, find a sacred place in your house, in your office, where you can raise your altar. You must look for something, some place where you can erect your altar. Now, some people, not everybody has a house where he can spare a room. If you have, you have a house where you can spare a room, dedicate a room. Even if it's a room that some people may use here and there, in that room you may dedicate a corner. Where you say, it is here that I will erect my altar. But if you do not have such a place in your office for the duration where you'll be there, you can say in this corner, this is where my altar will be. But just please bear in mind that your altar must be sacred. It must not be a place where when you are not there, people will go and do all kinds of things. It must be some place that is sanctified. Now, if you say, I do not have a room, I do not have a, 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 a house of myself. But where you are, you can choose a little corner in your room and say, this corner in this area it will be my altar. It will be my place. Remember, in the New Testament, the accent is spiritual, invisible. What I am saying to you in number one is just a physical manifestation. Not to help angels, but to help you connect in a certain place. It is a motivation to yourself to know that here there is something that I had done with God. 
Those of you who own your own house is good. Own houses, it is uh, advised that uh, you may spare a corner where you say, this is my place of meeting with God. Now, if you say, I do not have a place, you can use literally anything because even the physical manifestation I'm leading you to in raising your altar is just a point of contact. Are you hearing me? Yes, if yes. you don't have a place, put a chair. This chair is a chair I will be calling my altar. I take this chair, bring me a chair. I take this chair as my altar. This chair now is my altar. Every time I want to meet with God, I will use this as my meeting place. I will bow here to pray. I'll make sure that nobody else uses this chair. This chair's purpose will only be for my meeting with God. Every time I want to meet God, I come here. Every time I want God to vindicate me over a cause, I come here. Amen. This is my place of meeting. Are you hearing me? Now, if you say, but pastor, I do not have a chair to use as a place of meeting. I want to bring it to you in a simple way that you understand. Go to your house and find a wall. Reyabasata. Say in this wall, this is my place of meeting. This is a sanctified place between me and God. So every time I want to meet God, my gateway, my corridor is here. I come here. Makoto yebatata. Reme tosho tosho. Hear me. The welling wall in Israel, where men and women go to from around the world, is just a mere wall. It is not even a decorated wall. But we go there not for physical things. We go there to meet with God. We go there because we understand the spirituality in the sanctification of that wall. There may not even be scriptures that tells you you need to go to that wall. But because it has been sanctified for a purpose, it matters in the spiritual realm. Yes. Now you put a wall. You say, this wall, nobody will touch it. This wall, I will reserve it to God. When I come, I call on you, Jehovah. I call on you, Jehovah. This becomes your altar. Are you hearing me? Now, if you say, the walls in my house, will not work find a floor two towels in your house find a spot now please understand again i say we are of the spirit whatever we are doing in the physical is merely for us it is to encourage us to put us in a certain frequency it is not for god because Jesus Christ said that it will not be in Jerusalem or in that That's mountain right. that those who worship God will worship the Father. Mm -hmm. Because those who worship God will worship him in spirit and truth because God is spirit. Are you hearing me? Amen. But that this is to help Alf. To help Alf in my little understanding, in my little faith to know that it is when I'm here that I commune with God. Yesterday they had to erect structures. I don't have that structure. I have this little place. There, there, there is a black tile or white tile or brown tile. I count one, two, three. I sanctify it. Some people will even go on and lay a carpet on it. And every time they want to kneel there, they remove the carpet because that place is sanctified. Am I helping you? And somebody will say, Daddy, I don't have any place. I don't have a spot. I don't have a chair. As you see me, that's how I am. This is everything I have. It's me and my Bible. Is there anybody who has a Bible? Okay, can, I, can I use your Bible, my precious daughter? Yeah, it's just me and my Bible. I go to church with my Bible. The Lord promised me prosperity. I didn't see it yet. My prosperity is still in heaven. You need an altar so that prosperity in heaven may manifest in the flesh. Yes, so what yes. do you do? You take that Bible. Buy another one. Take 
that one Bible make it your altar. Reba Soto. That Bible. When there is problem at work, go to work with it. You walk in with your altar. Are you hearing me? When you are praying, anywhere you go, you bring that Bible. Maga Romunda Reba Zata. When you travel before God, with that physical, simple thing, you are connecting. You got to have a secret of victory. Amen. Something that draws you closer to God. That's right. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? I will the Lord say. bless you. But as we have seen with David, David used a stone. The stone that he had used that night as a pillow became the stone for his miracle. The Bible say he used that stone and made a pillar. And he spoke to God over a stone. And he said to God, if you will do this and this for me, this and that for me, this stone that I use as a pillow will become the house of God, not my palace. It is spiritual. He said, it will become the house of God. That's why I had said, those who will be with me tomorrow, as I will hold your hand step by step on raising an altar, I will give you a prophetic stone that I prayed for, a white stone. I will save it. Now, now that, that is not that there is power in the stone, no. But it's a prophetic stone I pray for, I declare words, and I'll do that again this night until I give it to you. It will have a mission. It will be a point of contact. Some of you will use it as the main stone for your altar. You will go with it. You put it in your office, in your prayer place, on your chair, whatever you do with it. I will not reveal much because it's big. that is for the IVP. Please, I have a seat. I give you this example there is a testimony that i present to you but while i was thinking of it i remembered here i had prophesied on somebody in a similar matter but i cannot remind remember the details of the prophecy i gave to that person but i remember it very clearly the person came from a certain place and i spoke to him about their house and so forth but this one I give you is a testimony that uh, goes according to what I am teaching in this first point. There is a family that bought a house here in Johannesburg, a beautiful house, and they moved into the house. From the time they moved into the house, they first told them that they are the second owner of the house. Very pretty, beautiful, luxurious house. But from the time they moved into the house, Unbeknown to them, forces have been working against them. Marriage went down. Children went AY. Finances were, was no longer as it was. Things were going really south. They came to church, and as God gave us the grace to sit down one day together, they presented to me the issue. But when they're presenting it, they are accusing everyone in the family. If an uncle always looks at them like this, I say, it probably is that uncle. Because every time the way he looks at us, they had accused everyone. Because you see, they understood that uh, what was happening in their family was not normal. They say it is jealousy because when we bought this big house, you know, some people did not like. And they started saying, one will say this, the other will say that. But while listening to them, the Lord opened my eyes. That the house they lived in, those who owned it before them, had erected an evil altar in that house. Not against them, for their own good. So they lived in that house, and when they did not want the house anymore, they sold the house and moved on. But you must know, an altar does not die. 
they had no link with the, own, the previous owner of the house. The mere fact that they moved into that house, things began to happen against them. So I began to describe the house with my eyes closed. I said, I'm seeing your house. It's like this. Yes, Papa. You know when you are prophetic? <laughs> I said, I am seeing a glass door. Papa, you are in my house. I say, there is a couch, a brown couch. Yes, my papa. <laughs> I see a big television. Yes, daddy. I am counting rooms. One, two, three. That's our main room, papa. I described the house in the spirit. And I told them, the house in your bedroom, there is a place like this and that. Yes, daddy. We use it to put flowers. I say, oh. There is a corner in the house. They put a big plant there. Not knowing that that corner was an altar. The previous owner called on some de divinity or deity there. Simple people. Mm -hmm. They sing hallelujah, hosanna. Hallelujah, hosanna. Hallelujah, hosanna. Hallelujah, hosanna. When they finish, the devil go, pa! Because they cannot see with no spiritual eyes. They fall in the trap of the enemy. Wow. But hallelujah, ministries, you are blessed. Oh, I say you are blessed. blessed. We are blessed. That will never be your portion in, in the, the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. There, there, there are many believers who are falling in the trap. They speak biblical, but they leave nothing else. Mm. When you hear them pray, they call God's name in Hebrew as if they understand a bit of Hebrew. <laughs> they begin by prayer. Uh, in a prayer, they begin by greeting God in Hebrew. Shalom. <laughs> Abba, shalom. They call it all his name. But on the ground, the enemy has advantage of them. Because they are simple. They are feeble. That is not your portion. I would say, say that it. is not my portion. That is not my portion. Say every evil altar. Every evil altar. Working against me. Working against me. Directly or indirectly. Directly or indirectly. Fire! 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 In the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. There is a spiritual son of man that was promoted very high in his country. And he was wise to know. He said, Daddy, many people who sat on that chair that they're giving me died. Now they're giving me the chair. Daddy, I will not go into that office unless you come with me. I said, but I cannot, I do not have time to come. He said, hey, it will wait. I will wake from the reception. He understood. So we sent pastors there. They went to pour oil. And when we're pouring oil there, it's not to fight Samutis. No, to destroy altars. Because you can survive a small witchcraft, but to survive an altar, you have to destroy it. So they went in and destroyed the altar. Day after, he went in. Every evil altar erected against you. Jesus. That you know that you do not know. Mm. It's being destroyed right now in the in name, the of, name Jesus. of Jesus. Amen. Please have a seat. So your altar must be something physical to help you connect properly second thing number two your altar must have a name a purpose you must give your altar a name 
You must give your altar a purpose. It must have a mission. Jacob called that place because of the altar Bethel. Though previously it was known as Luz. This altar of mine must have a mission. You don't just erect an altar for the sake of a structure. It has to have a name, a purpose, a mission. I say this altar is for my family. So I call it my family altar. Mm. This altar, I speak to you. Your mission and your purpose is protect us protect my children bring prosperity to my family bring union i am speaking to my altar right an altar that has no mission will not target properly your altar cannot be just an altar it must address certain stuff as a pastor, you are raising an altar for ministry. That altar is for ministry. It's not for a job out there. The mission of this altar is spiritual. This altar, the mission behind it has, goes beyond me. It's to reach nations. To build generation. To be a source of power for many. Right. To be a fountain through which the movement of the Holy Spirit will reach my generation oh, and people Jesus. in my time from all over the world. It is a mission. Your altar. Bring me the chair again. Lady here. I gotta give this altar of mine a mission it is not just a general altar are you hearing me yes, yes. you erect an altar and you give it a name you give it a mission and here you understand quickly that when i speak about altar i'm not just talking about your quiet place i am not just referring to your uh, your place of prayer no i'm talking about something deeper than that a corridor to the supernatural, a place of meeting, a place of exchange. It has to have a mission. Whether it is a chair, a Bible, a corner, a wall, a room, whatever the case may be, it has to have a mission. That's why when you are going through situation and the Lord leads you to raise an altar for that specific issue, it happens often, you erect the altar, giving it the mission to address that issue. Are you hearing me? Yes, yes. And of course, you can call your altar general. You, you do anything you can do. Just help me out. As clearly as it comes, it will not be as effective as it should. Are you hearing me? Three, you got to enter or you must enter into covenant with God through that altar. There must be a covenant. Covenant is key in many things we do. Covenant is not a promise. Covenant is more than a promise. It's made with vows. When Jacob arose in the morning the bible say he made a covenant through a vow genesis 28 verse 20 the bible say then jacob made a vow saying if god will be with me and keep me in this way that i am going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I have set as a pillar covenant. 
on the altar shall be God's house and all and of all that you give me I will surely give a tenth to you tithe has nothing to do with the law we give tithe because we understand God not because of the law of Moses are you hearing me those who are spiritual do not need anybody to encourage them in giving tithe. He entered into covenant over the altar and he spoke to God. The altar that you erect must be linked to you. You must be in covenant with the altar. That is why it's so important. Some families are hurt today because the person who erect, erected the altar in your bloodline before you existed entered into covenant that binds everyone out of them these people who came or a person who came and said i'm erecting this covenant or this altar to you calling a certain name or a certain god kuntu God Kuntu. Because he's going to Kuntu Kidi. Kuntu. He said, Oh God Kuntu. I have erected this covenant, this altar. I've erected this altar to you. So that you may be our guardian. Today, I give myself to you. That you may protect us, me, my children, and my descendants. We all submit to you, Nkuntu. Now, you are not born. That's the street generation before you. The person say, we all submit to you. Not understanding that that is not the true God. That is a devil behind. It's a masquerade. Now, generation after generation, this one, because of a covenant, his hand can reach you because you're coming from that bloodline. Are you understanding that? That's right. Now, when you enter into your covenant, you must also, when you build your altar, you must also enter into covenant that will bless you and your children and the children of your children. Lord, I serve you. Today, as I raise this altar for my family, may there be no other God but you, Jehovah, Amen. unfailing God, mm. faithful Savior, covenant keeping to my bloodline. When my children and the children of my children will go astray, may you be there to catch them and bring them back. Oh, Jesus. You are speaking, you are entering into covenant. When evil will arise against anyone from my bloodline, may you be the defender of our cause. May you be our shield, oh God. Now, this prayer is not just a prayer. You are entering into covenant. And those who have done what I'm telling you, no matter where they go, you can bomb an airplane. Everybody's dead. You see him coming with a parachute. Have I have a covenant. I, I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant I man. Receive it. Who am I talking to? Man. Why? Because when you build this properly, you have spoken here. Mm. It will never reach you, your bloodline. Why? Because there is a covenant between you and God on his altar that you raised. Are you hearing me? Please have a seat. Fourth, the Bible shows that uh, David in the morning took of the oil he had and anointed the altar. Genesis 28, verse 18 we read, Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put on at his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. When you erect an altar, you must anoint that altar. By anointing your altar, you are setting it aside 
It's not just a corner in the house. No, it is a sanctified corner. It's not just a wall. My altar is just a wall, but this wall may be a normal natural wall. From this corner to here is my altar. I will take off the anointing oil and I will pour it here. If I will mess up the painting, it is for a greater good. Amen. Are you hearing me? When I enter into covenant, my covenant is with God on this altar. It may stand as a wall, but I enter into covenant with God, speaking to the wall. And then after, I anoint my altar with oil. Remember, Jacob reigned from his father's house leaving everything that his father had understanding that uh, his father was the heir of a great and rich man called abraham they had it all in our normal age we we'll say they had cars they had properties he left empty-handed but in his pocket he made sure though he does not have the car not the donkey he has the oil because he understood the power of the anointing oil. When he had the experience at Bethel, he anointed the place. You must anoint your altar. Mm. Are you hearing me? Amen. You use anointing oil and you put it there. When you're going through this process, the devil is crying because he knows what will come out of that. The devil is crying because he knows that after here, I will have no power. I prayed for a, a, a precious daughter yesterday from Impangeni, and she said, the Lord spoke to me about an altar that uh, she erected two weeks ago. She said that uh, I've erected an altar two weeks ago in my father's garage. Why could I pick it up? It's because that altar is working. It's active. Are you hearing me? That's right. It's active. Last but not least, you must declare your sacrifice on your altar. Remember, everything about your altar is good. But if there is no sacrifice on your altar, your altar is weak. What gives power to your altar is not its structure. It is the size of the sacrifice you, look, you lay on it. A sacrifice is something that uh, costs you. And when I say cost to you, to many of you who have gone through sacrifice, you will know it disturbs your program. It hurts you. It pinches you. So, as you erect your altar, there must be a sacrifice. Now, please understand this truth. A great altar must carry a lesser altar. Meaning, you build your altar on an altar. The altar you build in your house does not carry sacrifice what carries sacrifice is the altar on which it is built meaning the altar of the house of god are you hearing me but once you have brought, presented your altar on the greater altar on which this altar is connected to you must declare your sacrifice on your personal altar are you hearing me did you catch that this is to say, you do not come with a million rain and lay it here and go home or stick it on your wall. If you have brothers, <laughs> they will think miracle money is still working in the house. Are you hearing me? You present it, the Bible calls the altar of the house of God, the storehouse. Right. You hear that? The Bible calls it the storehouse. So you bring it to the storehouse and lay it there and then you come here and declare your sacrifice. You don't forget to do so because in the spiritual realm, as I said, the battle is in words and altars. So you must speak it here. If I give you an example i have 500 
thousand rand in my hand. And I'm raising my personal direct altar. I bring 1,000 rand in my altar. The devil will attack me immediately. Because you understand that this one is a pete pete. You know pete pete? Meaning that that is <laughs> extremely soft. Is because you see, sacrifice, the devil watches me, he watches you. You understand what you do? And he will choose his targets. He knows that ah, this one, he missed it. This one is missing it. Do you understand? But if I have a thousand, one of my sons, the pastor, one of my pastors, spoke to me yesterday. I don't want to point him out. He said, I have 1.1 million run in my account. And God told me, that is the sacrifice on my altar. He's a pastor. Are you hearing me? Amen. He said, God asked me to raise it up. Last week, I raised on my altar just above a million rand. And I thought that that was what I had to do. But God told me I should do, just before he said that, God had told me, do the same in this account. Remove everything. Because you are raising an altar. What makes an altar is not words, it's not wishes, it's not good heart, it's a sacrifice. Something that uh, shocks you. A son of mine sent me a message and said, Dad, I'll not be around, but I sent my, my sacrifice on the altar. And he sent me a proof of payment, a thousand rand. I said, this one. Some people, are, you don't know how to get it into the mind. That's right. It's not good. There is a picture of Jesus Christ with a little girl. I just paint, uh, paintings. He's holding a big teddy bear. And some of you have seen it. Yeah, and he's asking the little girl with the little teddy bear she has. While he's holding a bigger teddy bear. The idea is, give it to me. I'll give you a better one, a bigger one, a greater one. But sometimes we hold on to the little we have because we do not see far than our nose. Right. You bring your sacrifice and you announce your sacrifice on the altar. Now, before I let you go and pray with you, I want to say this. You build an altar again and again. This is not an option. You have two options that are led by the Spirit of God when it comes to the continuity of your altar. If this altar of mine has to remain powerful, not die, has to remain powerful, as the Lord will lead me, I need to feed it with my sacrifice. Here and there, the Lord will lead you because I call this prophetic altar. You will sense it, you will know it. God may speak to you through events around you, or he may speak to you directly. And as soon as he say that, you may not only go and meet him on the altar, next time you go there, he will lead you to raise another sacrifice to your discretion. Are you hearing me? But some other times, God may not want you to raise a sacrifice to keep this altar maybe talking still about this altar, you can then, after you have done this properly, over this altar, erect another sacrifice and words that helps you deal with another standing matter that you came across in the course of life. Meaning, today I raised this altar after eight months, I see sickness in my house. God may say, go back to the same altar and address it on your altar. I go to work after uh, uh, two weeks and I have a problem. God say, go to your altar and address that work issue there on the altar. You may be uh, going and you see something happening with your children. God say, go back to this altar and speak because this is a point of meeting. This is uh, your gateway to heaven. But there are times where, like we have seen, if you read the Bible carefully, Abraham erected many different altars, one person. Where God will say, for this standing matter, another standing matter, look for another corner. Do something else. Are you hearing me? 
God is lifting you up and is giving you another city, another town, another opportunity, another career, another business. And he says that for this new open door, for this new venture, you used to be a businessman, but now he's taking you into politics. And he says to you, you will become a member of parliament. Now, he may say that for this new sphere of operation, I want you to erect another altar. Then you do the process again. Are you hearing me? Amen. But in general, you must understand, when you do a physical thing, it's just a manifestation of what is set in the spiritual realm. If you do it properly, your life will never be the same again. Amen, I receive. My altar, my life. My altar, my breakthrough. Mm. My altar, my strength. Mm. My altar, my power. My altar, my healing. I cannot die before my time. Amen. If my altar is standing strong before God. I cannot be prone to disease and sickness. Mm -hmm. If my altar is strong before God. As a child of God. Whatever the enemy has brought that I kept you captive to this day. If you know it's not from God. I want you to erect an altar and give it that name. Call it this altar is my well-being. Is my marriage. My family. This altar is my health. God will deliver you. I heard the man of God say, on my altar, nothing resists to 72 hours. Glory to Jesus. Nothing. No, that, that is him. Another one told me that uh, every time I erect an altar, the midnight that follows, all my problems are sorted. Another one. Mm. Is a midnight altar. Deliverance comes in midnight. You can call your altar whatever the Lord leads you. Amen. You may have your own experience. Maybe yours will be a seven minute as you erect it. Any matter you present to God. Maybe after it. seven minutes something happens. That goes between you and Jehovah. But if you understand an altar today and you erect your altar according to the five point I have presented you, and that you will raise a significant sacrifice on your altar, your life will never be the same again. I, I invite you to please stand up. While you stand, there are people I want to pray for, but because I wanted to take this long time to speak to you, I have omitted to do that purposely. Tomorrow we should pray for each other. Tomorrow I will minister to many of you. And on Sunday, we will carry on with that. Something greater is happening. I want you to grab it. Is there anybody who will take hold of it? Can I see your hand? If you Name say, I will take Jesus. hold of it. I'll take hold of it. On Sunday, we will all come to God with our sacrifice. I will bring my sacrifice. Bring your sacrifice. Those of us who can do your best of ability, remain in the season of these seven days of fasting, seven days of glory. If you can, if you cannot, make a vow to God and you know what to do. But I plea with you, if you can, between now and Sunday, may God help you. Raise your sacrifice so that in the atmosphere of seven days of fasting, in the seventh month of this year, you have fulfilled that which God has asked you to do. We will all come on Sunday with our sacrifice. And we will begin to see what God can do because our altars will be operational and it will be complete. It does, it does not go with how much you have or I'm not working. Remember, it is not a money thing. Somebody told me, what else can I present to God? What else can I present to God? What we have seen people presenting to God in the scriptures, we see they have presented to God things that were tangible, materials, and uh, 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 palpable, as they say. But I believe that uh, uh, somebody may say, I have nothing. Those who say I have nothing is always a problem because I don't know how to help you. There was a time in my life where I was among those who could say I have nothing. But I had pushed myself to a place where if I had to give my shoe, I'll give my shoe. I remember giving God everything in my house. This is not a call for you to give God everything in your house. 
but I remember doing that. And I had my second child. No, no, I had AJ. I had AJ. Yeah, I had AJ. AJ was, I think, a few, few months ago. He was still a little child. But I gave God everything because of an altar, because of a covenant. I gave him my curtain. They were not the greatest curtain, but I gave it to God. I gave my chairs, my sofas, my fridge, everything in the house. So I would literally sleep on the floor. I was a pastor. I will sleep on the floor. And the only soft area for my son to be would be my chest. And I will put AJ, my second born, on my chest. So that when I breathe, it will be good for him. Mm. It was painful because you cannot sleep when the child is sleeping. Or else you will turn and so forth. I will spend night feeling it physically. But I did that to God. That's why the notion of I don't have is a very difficult notion to embrace. It all goes with your faith. It all goes with your relationship, your revelation. Are you hearing me? Amen. God will make you a money magnet. I receive it. A source of blessing. I receive it. If you understand this. On Sunday, come to him. Erect your altar. And bring your sacrifice. Now that you know how to erect your altar. In your homes, you can begin to do it. The sacrifice is Sunday. But you can enter into covenant. You can find a spot tonight. You can do all that. And we close it tonight on a Sunday. I see a lot of people. They are angels of God here. I'm feeling like prophesying. But I'm checking. It's 10, 10 past 10 or 11, 12 past 10. Tomorrow and Sunday we'll experience God. I want you to lift your hands before God. Begin to pray according to what you heard. May my God be your God. As I led you through what God said. May from this day, from this point. God may lead you spiritually. Your hands lifted, begin to speak to God. Mashata Rebe Sayaba. Yeketa Ruku Sukuti Yababa. Shata Rebe Kanta Robo Sete. Jesus. By His word you leave. By His word you leave. By his words, you leave. Prepare your heart for your altar. My altar, my life. My altar, my breakthrough. My altar, my power base. My altar, my point of contact with God. My corridor to the heavenlies. My gateway into the spiritual realm. My altar, my point of meetings, my place of divine encounters, my altar, my victory, my altar, my victory. Jesus. Jesus. Yo 
My altar, my altar, my altar, my victory, my altar, my next level, my altar, my healing, my altar, my restoration, my altar, my marriage. My altar, my victory. My altar. My altar. My altar. My altar, my ministry. My altar. Zoto Rebekanta. of strength my altar my place of turn around yes lord matarobo sheya Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. With your eyes closed, I want you to hold the hand of the person next to you. Find somebody and hold his hands with your eyes closed. Hold the hands of your neighbor. And if you are watching me, you are part of what God is doing right now. Yes. God is speaking and He's speaking to you where you are. Wherever you are, you too can do the same. Erect an altar. Raise a sacrifice. If you are in Alleluia Ministries, any branch around the world, go to the branch, to your local church that you connect to, that is connected to this altar on Sunday and lay your sacrifice. And if from around the world you're watching me, there is no altar of Hallelujah Ministries, but you recognize that you are connected to this altar and this altar is the altar that speaks into your life. Erect your own altar and send us your sacrifice. So that we may lay it on this storehouse. Lay it on this altar. On the number on your screen right now. Write these numbers. No other number. This bank details. Do the same. We are in a spiritual time. In a spiritual season. Yes. Where God in the seven days. Want to perfect everything he declared in your life. Do what God say you do. Yes. Your life will never be the same again. For God is not a man that he may lie, nor a son of man that he may repent. What proceed out of his mouth will come to pass. As you hold the hand of your brother, your sisters, I plead with you, lift those hands up to God. As a people, as the children of God together, as you lift the hand of your brother, you are lifting his life up. You are lifting the life of your sister. Soto Namazete. Kalababo Soto. Now begin to pray for the person whose hands you are holding. Ramamama Soto. Mashata Rebebebebebe. Soto Robo Seta. Begin to pray for the person whose hands you are holding in this spiritual time. 
May God manifest his goodness. May God manifest his power. May the glory of God be made manifest. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, yes, speak words. Words carry power. Your words right now carry life. Speak a word over that person. Speak life over that person. Speak healing over that person. Speak deliverance over that person. Speak elevation over that person. Speak the next level over that person. Your voice right now carries weight in the spirit. Your voice right now carries power in the realm of the spirit. Prophesy goodness unto that person. Prophesy breakthrough unto that person. Prophesy deliverance unto that person. Right now the heavens is open. The heavens is open above Hallelujah Ministries International. Speak into the heavens with immediate effect. Get an answer. For our prophet has opened the way for you and I to have access to greatness. Prophesy greatness over the life of that person. Prophesy good life. Perfect life over that life. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for altars, oh God. We thank you for knowing how to raise an altar. We thank you, Lord Jesus. For Lord God, as we raise these altars, oh God, tonight. Lord God, it shall give us access, oh God, into the realm of the Spirit. Father God, there shall be no more blockage, oh God. For the sacrifice we are about to prepare. The sacrifice we are about to put on that altar will make all the difference. Raising the altar is the first level, God. Lead our hearts, oh God, to obedience to a meaningful painful sacrifice a sacrifice oh God of love for you taking us out of a sacrifice oh God of remembrance oh God that as we sacrifice on our altar oh God you will look down and our sacrifice will become a remembrance before heaven my God and my Father, this is a sacred moment. This is a priestly moment. And you found us worthy to be a partaker of it, O oh God. By decoding, O oh God, the mysteries, O oh God, behind our problems. Father, we are grateful for your servant. We are grateful for our prophet. Oh, yes, Father. We bless his life. Thank you, Jesus. I want you at this moment where heaven is paying attention to your words. Speak a word over the guardian of this altar. Oh, yes. Speak a word. Open your mouth. Don't wait for me. I speak daily over his life. I want you to speak. Use this moment. Where you have raised that altar. Where you have connected to your spirit on the size of your sacrifice. Which will determine the size of your victory. Some of you are literally moving bodies. But your life has been taken. But after getting this revelation of raising up an altar... Life has come back in you. Amen. Sickness has left you. Speak a word over the prophet of this house. Of the prophet of the nation.
nations, for nations are drawing from this tonight. Lord, we bless your servant. Oh God, we speak divine protection upon him. Lord, preserve him, oh God. For the world, oh God, needs him more than we ever knew that they need him. We need our Father, oh God. Give him strength, oh God. Keep his eyes open and open it more, oh God. Lord, let him forever lead the way, oh God. Keep him bound in your counsel, oh God. Preserve the life of his wife and his children. Preserve the life, oh God, of his businesses. Lord, it will always flourish, oh God. It will never run dry. Remember the sacrifices oh God that he has laid on this altar oh God remember his tears oh God remember oh God of Lukau father we thank you we thank you oh God because of the sacrifice on Golgotha the greater altar you could lead him to lay this altar Father, where millions are drawing from. Father, this well will continue to have water flow. People will forever drink. The thirsty will come and their thirst will be quenched. The Holy Spirit shall activate that which God has in us. Now lift your hands under the supreme anointing. Of our spiritual father I bless your going and I bless your coming in the name of Jesus I bless your heart tonight I bless the decision that you are taking in spite of your situation in the physical that you will build the altar and you will raise a painful sacrifice that will cost you so that you know That every other altar that had a voice speaking over you has been silenced in the name of Jesus. Those voices will, those altars can only be silenced by the size of your sacrifice. Father, I bless this night. I bless every viewer, oh God, who has stepped in. Those, O God, who have sent this seed, those, O God, who are still sending seed, bless it, O God. Manifest Jesus in the midst, O God. Father, we thank you. you, And the church of God say amen. Amen. God bless you. Go now in the uncommon favor of Almighty God. We love you and God bless you.